So it looks like I just spilled ink all over my, my jumble. But what I did was I used what's called a layer style, which you get by double clicking on the layer and I'm on my combined layer here. And I use color overlay to color every pixel in that layer with black at 100%. What's nice about layer styles is they are not directly changing your pixels. They are adding an attribute to your pixels. And so I can turn that effect on and off. And I can add other effects. It reminds me that if I turn off this background white layer, there are a lot more than just black pixels in this. And even if I make it multiply mode, multiply mode is just a way of viewing it. So that doesn't change anything unless I have other things underneath showing through, right? So what we need to do at this step now is keep it in normal mode and then erase all the white pixels. We've used the lasso a lot as a selection tool. Right underneath the lasso is a little drawer of tools. The default is the object selection tool, which is something they've added to Photoshop in the last five years that tries to automatically detect edges and does not work great. It's kind of like a little shortcut tool. I'm not going to teach it much because it's not that useful. Instead, we're going to, and we're not going to use the quick selection tool, which is kind of like a magnetic kind of lasso that will try to detect edges. Instead, we're going to go right to the very bottom of that drawer to the old reliable tool, which is the magic wand. The magic wand selects pixels where you click. So if I click on that pixel, it will select it. But it will also select pixels that are similar to the pixel I click. And so the options are for the magic wand. Do I want it to be contiguous or not? That means if I select the whites, here I'll check contiguous. If I select, click on the whites, this will only select pixels of white that are touching the one where I clicked. Does that make sense? If I uncheck contiguous and I click on the white on the layer that's selected, even if that layer is not visible, it is now selecting every white pixel in that layer, whether they're connected to the where I clicked or not. How does it know how similar the pixel needs to be to white? It knows that from tolerance. A one tolerance Let's see, I don't think you can have a zero tolerance, can you? You can have a zero tolerance. So a zero tolerance would mean that the pixel has to be exactly like the one you clicked, or it won't select it. Zero tolerance is not very common. The default tolerance, when you first use the tool, is 32. So think of it as like a pixel within one third close of all the different pixels that can be. 32 is a good one to use in this instance. So if I click with a 32 tolerance with contiguous turned off on my combined layer and I have my other layers turned off, even my background layer, and then I hit delete, then I'll be left with only black and dark gray pixels and everything else will be an empty checkerboard devoid of pixels. All right. Now, because I've done that, I'll zoom in so you can see this, where you have some of that overlapping anti-alias from different layers. If I now turn on the effect, which fills everything with black, now it just does it over my image. So I'll turn that effect on and off. And you'll see all those in-between pixels that I don't want, because it's like I'm cutting this new shape out of black material is now completely filled in. And so now this is my finished black and white jumble. So it makes it look cleaner, basically? Yes, makes it look cleaner, it's especially enough. especially if some of your layers uh, got softened because you, you stretched, it stretched them a little bit more than the pixels could handle originally. Right. So the computer had to invent a lot of pixels, which softens it. This will clean everything up. When it softens it, does it, does it necessarily make make it blurry? It does because when, so let's think of it this way. If I put in a 
square, an exact square of pixels, mm -hmm. but that pixel square is 10 pixels by 10 pixels mm -hmm. on a white background of 100 by 100 pixels, right? right? And then I say, okay, now change that, go to image size, force those 10 pixels by 10 pixels to be 100 pixels out of 100 pixels. So it's taking those 10 pixels, it changes it into 100, and then it takes the white pixels, changes that from 100 to 1,000. So whenever you grow something, the computer has to invent pixels. And when it invents them at an edge, like between the white and black pixels, it's going to anti-alias. It's going to create buffers where it's transitioning from one to the other. And that's why when you do pixel art and you want the pixels to be really defined, you can't actually, you have to cut out the no. shapes, so if that makes sense. Because if you actually draw it pixel by pixel and then just make it bigger, it will be really soft. Okay. Was it like in this class when uh, I think it was you showed examples? So once we are to this step, we've cleaned it up. We have a jumble out of black line art that comes from at least five sources. And it's great if you can keep those individual layers in your Photoshop file. Because this is our working file. Now we have completed the requirements of the assignment. Now we just need to save it. So I'm going to say file save. It saves it as Carl Exercise 1, Johnny Quest, Copy PSD. That is saved within my folder, in my class folder. Here it is. I cannot post that into Canvas. I can attach it into Canvas, but I don't recommend you do it because it's a really big file. To view it online, we need to change it into an online format. So now I need to save it again. And I'm going to say File, Save a Copy. And this is just new, fairly new in Photoshop. The only way you can get online file formats, or what are called loss compression formats, is to say save a copy, rather than just save, right? Or save as, even. Export, Export will do it. But save as used to do it, used to give you all the file format options. Now save as only gives you limited file format options so that you don't end up accidentally saving it as something that has reduced capability. But if you go to save a copy, then it knows it's safe. You're, you're not going to overwrite your PSD file because it's already going to add copy to the name. And then you go to format, and instead of Photoshop, we want it as a PNG. Now, if you do a PNG, it will be a free-floating image like this. And any background that's behind it will be the background. So if I, if I load this PNG into a, wet, a red website, there will be red behind my black lines. And if you have the background icon turned on, will it still load as a PNG? So I can save a PNG no matter what it looks like as a pixel grid. If I had the background turned on, it would save the white as a PNG. But if I have the background turned off, this is what's called supporting transparency. Okay. So I'm going to save it two ways. You only need to save it one way, just so I can show you the difference. So I'm going to save it as a PNG. Because it's a PNG, I can keep the same name, but it's a different file format. So when I go back to my folder and I open it up, you'll see that now there's a PSD and then there's a PNG. I usually label my online file formats as orange. But when I open that PNG just in preview, it looks pretty different, right? Because it's transparent, there are no pixels other than the black pixels. So this shows it to me on a gray background. That's just what preview does. Now, let's save it again as a copy. Save a copy. And instead of PNG, we're going to use the most common online file format, which is JPEG. It's the most common because it gives you the most um, memory control. And that's what happens on this next screen. We want the quality to be between 10 and 12. As long as the quality is in the maximum range instead of high, you're not going to lose any data in the way we use it in this class. But Notice that it will give me a preview. At quality of 10, my image is only 1.2 megabytes. But if I want that even smaller, if I go to a quality of 3, it's now only 595 kilobytes. That's the size of like a small Word document. And that helps because it's just black and white, right? But I, that's why we want it to always be at least 10. And ideally, we wouldn't post anything to the canvas that was bigger than 5 megabytes though our files are sometimes going to be over a gigabyte large. And so JPEG allows us to reduce the quality. 
It's like rounding numbers. Okay, now if I look at my folder, now I have a PNG and I have a JPEG. So what's the difference between them? This is the PNG, transparent background. This is the JPEG. JPEG has to fill in to a full rectangle, rectangle or square. So when you have empty space, it's going to fill it in with white. Does that make sense? So when do you want it as a PNG? This is how you want to save things like logos to rasterize on the websites so that their shape matters, their background matters. This is what's called transparent. This is what's called, you know, flattened and fully opaque. Either one of them will work on Canvas just fine. Okay, so I have saved these. Now how do I put them up to Canvas? We go to our class. The wrong one. <laughs> we go to our correct course. We are uh, Arts 2348002. -02. That's cross-listed for both digital imaging and digital med media. And you go to the shortcut, right? If you don't want the whole intro to everything, just go right to assignments rather than unit modules. The unit module we're working on is always in our course outline for the day. And we are doing exercise one, but we are, this is where we post it. It will also give you the directions and the directions to post. And some of us have already posted, right? So what do you need? You need your name and then you need your artwork. So Kat, you still want to put your name above it. And this is how we'll do what's called presentation critiques, kind of informal critiques of it, where we, we share our work and talk about it a little bit. So I'm going to post mine. And then you're encouraged to post more than just the requirements. You can post process work. So I want all of you to post for this first presentation critique, even if it's not finished. Save wherever you are as either a PNG or a JPEG. Create a new post as a reply, put your name in. That reminds us how you want to be called, right? And your last name is registered to make sure you get credit. Then click on this little blog interface image upload icon. Click on upload image. Find either your PNG or your JPEG. I'll use my PNG in this case. And click submit. It's going to come in quite large because remember we made these 8 by 10 by 350 pixels, which is good enough for printing. But we're going to shrink them down. The reason it's really helpful to write your name is the name gives you a good thing to scale your image against, right? Because we want to be able to see everyone's image with their name. And then I'm just going to hit post reply. Now, if I look at the directions, after I've posted the black one, as either a JPEG or a PNG. This is using PhotoP, but we're doing the same things in Photoshop. There is extra finishing techniques you might try. Layering up your black with other materials, other colors. So I'm going to show you that really quickly. One way to do that, I'm going to always encourage you to do this as a duplicate, because the black is what's required. So this is like it's cut out of black material. To make a duplicate, you hit Command-J. You can also do that by going up to layer, duplicate layer. But command J will be using a lot. It makes a perfect copy of not just your layer, but any attributes and effects you have on that layer. Okay. Now I'm going to double click on that layer again to get the effects and the color overlay for this copy. I'm no longer going to use black. I'm going to use something like cyan. Or bluish green. Or I can go to millions of colors rather than web colors and find kind of a color. And I can fill it 100% at, uh, at that color. And I can turn on my white background so I can see what it looks like as a JPEG or on a white background. So I hit OK. I've just added color. What if I want more than that? I go back to Effects, double click on the layer. And I'm going to turn off color overlay. And instead, I'm going to do a gradient overlay. Gradients can be customized. And this to me isn't you creating pixels. This is just using effects. So we're still within the parameters. And in this newest version of Photoshop, you'll get lots of folders of different pre-made gradients, some that are very subtle, like cloud, some that are more uh, out there, like iridescence. 